is about 9.15 p.m. even though it's super bright out and we are waiting for dinner so we can head out. Uh, we were originally going to anchor outside of Puerto Williams but with the weather changing the captain decided that we're just gonna do a straight shot for Antarctica. Hopefully no anchoring tonight. Here is the boat. Got this really big back area. Center cockpit. Here is the little zodiac. A massive one compared to ours. Probably like, I don't know, 12, 13 feet. It's a steel hull. Teak flooring. Um. There's some little steps all the way to the mast, and I've seen previous photos where you can go to the top. So I'm going to try to do that at some point on this trip. We were supposed to leave at around 5, I think. But the wind was gusting like 40, and now it's perfectly flat out. And it's 9 o'clock, and the sun's still up. right now we are about to get in the Drake Passage in roughly like three four hours three more hours and we are sailing probably around six to eight knots we left yesterday around 
midnight. And then I think we anchored around five in the morning, just east of Isla Tierra del Fuego. And then we got back underway at 3 p.m. today. So today's the fourth and we are heading straight for Antarctica. No more anchoring, no more stops, and also probably no more dinner. So this is gonna be the roughest part of the trip, just crossing the Drake. But it's predicted to not be that terrible. We waited out until midnight. We were originally going to leave at, I think probably leave around three, and then I got pushed to five, and then I got pushed to eight, and then we ended up leaving at midnight or like around 11 p.m. But we were waiting for the weather to be good, so this is the good weather, and it's really not bad. So far we saw some Magellan penguins and some dolphins. Crossing the Drake Passage took about four and a half days and 500 to 550 nautical miles after leaving the Bagel Channel. Maybe I can be a rock star playing songs on my guitar. I know I have to be somewhere else to be able to find myself. Shouldn't be so complicated. As we were leaving the Beagle Channel, there were these dolphins that followed alongside the boat for about four hours, just jumping and playing in the swells. Uh, alongside was also another sailboat that kept us company for a few hours. Kind of nice to have a little racing competition. to do on the boat while transiting the Drake other than just lay in bed literally all day. I pretty much got out of bed only to use the bathroom and to get a few crackers. I just wanna go my own way. giving the Drake Passage its credit for what it feels like to actually cross it for four days. On a 53-foot boat, even though it looks so calm, down below it is so rough. It feels like being in a washing machine for 24 hours for four days in a row constantly having to brace yourself, whether you're getting out of your top bunk or going to the bathroom or just drinking water, constantly having to just hold on to something. And then at night, all the sounds just amplified. The winds were louder, the waves hitting the hull of the boat, being at the bow of the boat, just elevating sometimes with the swells. The thought of not knowing how the weather is and not knowing who would come if something were to happen. What would we do if the captain went over? But eventually, after four very long days, we reached the Antarctic Peninsula. And it was all worth it. 